How's it going everybody? Welcome back to Mojo Grip Mike here. Today we're gonna check out a speed machine that you're all too familiar with. Stay tuned, we're checking out the Lancer 4. We've checked out the Lantern model extensively on this channel, okay? But every time I see one, it just seems to be a different variant of this airplane. And let me just back up a bit because the wing is a bit long here. This is my neighbor's airplane. I sit on in and out, in and out, and I'm like, I need to check out your plane. I need to check out your plane. So today he gave me the keys and the range to this thing. Guys, this is the Lancer 4P, a 2005 model, and just ramp appeal on this plane this is a plane i've always wanted to fly but i'm just not up to it yet because this is a speed machine like i said and your pilot skills need to be up there if you're flying a beast like this okay so i'm just gonna go around it you see the design one thing you'll notice about the design of the lanterns okay as say compared to my airplane you see how smooth the surface of the wing is there's barely any rivets or zero rivets okay that's one thing I actually appreciate and love about the Lancer models is the smoothness of the surface. Now, this has got some chip on it. You can maybe tell the material that's been used. Uh, but I love that that you don't you barely see any of these whenever you're looking at a Lancer. And it's all screws here. And this thing has got a nice winglet here, nice curve. And you can see also the wing it's, I would say it's proportionate to the body of the airplane. Okay, so let me take you around. And in this plane, I don't believe we have LED lighting, but we have something something close. And I'll go around because they're testing the airplane there. And if you come around here, you see the ailerons. These are some long ailerons on this thing uh, compared to what I've seen. You can see how long the ailerons is. And then you've got your flaps. You've got a trim tab also on the aileron. And some of these planes, if not all of them, also come with, check this out. These are called speed brakes. And so you use this to slow this baby down either when you're coming into land or uh, whatever have you. So they, they do serve a purpose. And you will find a lot of these uh, installed in land stairs because they do serve a function. And then you come around here, you can also see how the height of this thing, it's pretty high to the ground. Okay, and I think it also helps with the ramp appeal. That's one of the things I love about this airplane is the looks. And if you hear any popping sound in the background, it's because uh, an aircraft is being fixed over there. So I hope you guys don't mind the noise. If we come around here, we're gonna get in the interior in a little bit, but you see the doors? This design, by the way, guys, and to give you some historical background on Lancer, when you think of experimental planes, Lancers were one of the first to do it. So as we move on here, you can see the door opening. One thing you should also know about this particular model is that you only have one door. So to get into this aircraft, you only have this door. It's pretty wide, so, but everybody has to go through this one door. And I believe the newest model of the Lancer is called the Mako. And I believe that also only has one door. I have to double check on that. And we'll get in and check out the interior in a little bit. One thing I do want you to know about Lancer is that they've been here since the beginning. When you think of experimental aircraft, this particular design, as a matter of fact, let me back up a little bit here while I stepped in mud. <laughs> okay, this design right here, guys, Lancers were the first to do it. Okay, when you look at this aircraft and you look at the Cessna TTX, Columbia, then became Cessna TTX. It's all the same design. Even the Cirrus, even when you look at the Cirrus, it's similar design, same same shape. Maybe Cirrus has a little bit more curve to it, but this design has been since the beginning. I believe they started designing the 4P in 1990. So we're talking about 30 years ago that this baby has been around. And again, that smoothness, like you, you look in the airplane and you look at the airframe, you don't, you barely see any screws, okay? You don't see rivets, you don't see screws. It's just smooth all the way. 
So let's go around it back here and I'm gonna watch my steps. So I don't step in more mud. And you see almost every control surface on this airplane has a trim tab. So you've got one also on this elevator. You see you've got a trim tab here. You've got another trim tab on the, on the rudder here. So very nice. And you can probably tell this is cash for the nose, which moves freely, so I can move the rudder here. Okay, we've got the horizontal stabilizer, vertical stabilizer there. More smoothness. Look, more smoothness all the way through. And then you come on this side, similar, you've got those long ailerons. I thought this was actually unique to the design of this wing. And again, you still got the speed, uh, speed brakes also on this side. And let's come around here. And this airplane will take, let's see, 100 low lead, 50 gallons of fuel. Okay, 50 gallons of fuel. Now, speaking of fuel, let's talk about the performance a bit because to me, that's really what set the Lancers apart from any other plane in its class, period. This to me may be the fastest airplane in its class. And when I say fastest, you also put it together with the Cessna TTX because it's pretty much the same airplane, except this is an experimental. The TTX is a certified plane with probably more goodies with it, but it's really the same airplane. And this is how you know how fast and how great of a performer this airplane is. One, you look at the nose. Look how big the nose of this thing is. It's basically half the size of the body frame. And the reason being is you've got a huge engine. The power plant in this is an IO 550, twin turbocharged Continental engine. And you get about 350 horsepower in this bad boy. Cruise performance, 250 knots. <laughs> Okay, you're basically traveling close to 300 miles per hour, if not more. The higher you go, so if you get to about 14,000 feet, you can cruise around 250 knots and you're burning about 17 gallons of fuel. But guess what? You climb up even further, you can get more speed out of this thing. So it's a great performer. And the reason you buy one of these is if you want to go fast. I don't see any other reason why. But let's get in the interior and check it out. So again, the Lancer is pretty high up. So to get in, you've got your step up right there. But first, let me open this door so we can get in. The latch is already open, so I just... And the door is pretty heavy. This is a very sturdy door. So make sure I got it open all the way first. Okay. Now, this is a weird angle to this door, but Let's see what we got in here. Look at this baby. Man, it's, it smells like it's been sitting for a little bit, but you can see the, the cockpit here. It's actually pretty neat. Honestly, for a 2005 model, this airplane, it looks solid. <laughs> Guys, if you see my hands right now, <laughs> I'm basically pushing on this leather and it's very, very soft. I don't know what material, or memory form in this, but it is it is nice and cozy in here. Now, the avionics in this, for those of you who are familiar with either Garmin, I train in the DA40 that has something similar. This looks very, very similar to a Garmin G1000, but I believe the one in this is the 900GX. I'm gonna confirm the name and I'll put it in the description. Uh, but this, think of this as the predecessor to the G1000. And also, if you think of the avionics I have in my plane, which is the G3X Touch, it's basically the same thing except touchscreen. So on like this model and the G1000, where you basically have buttons on the outside, the G3X Touch is touchscreen, and there's actually benefits to having uh, buttons to press because guess what? In turbulence, touchscreen is not all that nice. But anyway, you look in this panel and you see that it's basically full glass and it's pretty packed okay you've got dual screens there you've got the g5 for backup your radio and i love the toggle switches well not toggle but like buttons uh here nice and big and i'm sure those lit up uh, at night and then you've got your circuit breakers arranged to the right there um one thing you also see you've got your uh throttle quadrant I would say uh, this is very typical for Lantairs and also you think of the RV10 
this is how you push and pull on your throttle so you don't have something you you do this you basically pull and push so to push in is basically putting power in and push out is cutting power off and you've also got your propeller lever and your mixture so this is very typical it uses a constant speed prop and you've got all of that good stuff there so if you move around in the cabin guys this cabin is quite cozy and again i'm gonna get in to show you guys on the outside it may look cozy but i'm sure once i sit in it i'll get a better feel of how much width is actually in here and i think they could have made better use of this space but right now it's basically an armrest you've got a good i don't know how many inches that is that could be like three to five inches that could have served something uh but it's there but guys it does look nice in here the leather sitting is very nice and the back seat look very long okay you could basically turn this into a bed or something if you're a smaller person and just cuddle and take a nap in here uh but as you can see this is some stuff uh you can tell that they fly this in over water because you see the live vest there but let me get in let me get in so i can show you how's it going guys so here i am in the interior of the lancer 4p as i said <clears throat> excuse me as i said it's pretty cozy in here i did i it did look bigger on the outside but i promise you if you get into one of these it's gonna be cozy i'm not even gonna lie about that i already feel pretty tight in here and given that this particular seat i think it's moved more forward if i try to move it backwards let's see if there's a lever for me there is a lever here that i can move it uh back and forth but look look at my leg room right now i'm pretty much touching so if i'm flying this airplane i would either be kind of tight here or i would need to move these seats a bit further back for me to have some leg room and guess what the more i move back the less leg room the person in the back has. So this airplane is more for speed. I think that engine took so much more space than it should, but that's that's what you get an airplane like this for. Now, in terms of comfort though, you can even hear my, my squishy butt. It's very comfortable. This seats are plush, man. I have no idea what material they use, but they, these are very comfortable. Again, the only thing you have to think about is the space that you're sharing. If somebody's sitting next to you, hopefully you guys are pretty proportionate and you're not squeezing each other. And then you go to the back there, uh, you have to think about the same thing. Okay, so leg room and arm room will be something to, uh, to consider if you're looking at a Lancer. Now, let's talk about this nice jet-like or fighter jet-like uh, control arm here. This is pretty sweet, and you see these also, again, you think of the Cirrus, they have a side stick like this, uh, except this one, it feels more like a fighter jet. And it's pretty, it's pretty, uh, it's got girth to it, so it's it's not a small, tiny thing. So your hand, and I have big hands, so my hands fit properly in here. You've got some buttons and switches, uh, which I'm not sure what, what is for right now, but I can see this is probably for your trim. And one of the cool things about side sticks or any control sticks like this is you can actually change the function that each uh, button or switch serves. Same thing in my airplane. Again, when you're building an experimental, you have the option, it's all wiring. And so you have the option to make this do something and make this do something else. Uh, so it's not set, you can always change it. Well, which is the cool thing. One more thing I would say before I step out, actually, let me switch the camera around. So one thing I do like about this airplane is that this is basically what I'm looking at when I sit down. I always compare like how much over the dash I can see whenever I sit down in an aircraft. And I like that I can see, actually, no, this is, this is about what I can see right here. Actually, no, I'm able to see that airplane in front of me. So if you, if you are 5'9", 5'10", this will be your view. Let me calm down a little bit because this, this, so this is my actual view in this aircraft. So the dash is not covering a bunch of things and I like that. And guys, getting in and out of the Lancer 4P will take some getting used to. And then when you look at this doorway angle here and the seats being pulled forward, uh, that's gonna take some getting used to. Right now, also you've got this bulky thing in the way that you have to step over or step into. So. 
Uh, that's going to take some getting used to. So getting in and out. Again, these are some of the things, honestly, that I like to think about and I like to show you guys in case you were thinking about getting this airplane or any other airplane. You have to think about all these things. Again, the Lancer 4P is already high. And so you have to think if you're carrying passengers or somebody, maybe your mom, like my mom, if I was bringing my mom who is in her 60s or mid 60s, I would not want her climbing into this. Just so foot for thought. So let me step out. So who's looking to buy and fly an airplane like this? Honestly, it's not going to be an intermediate pilot or a beginner pilot. I think a pilot who is well into their hours and who knows what they're doing that's when i would step into an airplane like this but really it's somebody who wants to get somewhere fast this is a cross-country machine if you're not gonna fly far or long you don't need a lancet 4p but if you got coast to coast as part of your mission then cruising at 200 300 miles per hour you can get one of these and one thing I forgot to mention is the fact that the Lancet 4P is also, I mean, also has retractable landing gear. That's part of what gives you that speed performance. And you've got about a thousand pounds of useful load to carry people and fuel. But always understand that you have to compromise uh, between the two, especially if you're going somewhere far. Now, in terms of the price, these things, they range, I would say from 150 to two fifty thousand dollars depending on how well kept they are and how much time you have on the engine anyway i need to get out of this noise i hope you guys enjoyed this video if you did please give it a thumbs up and if this is your first time be sure to subscribe to mojo bro with the notification bell on thank you all so much for watching and i will catch you on the next video